morning. Well, good afternoon, I guess. It's noon. So welcome to the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. My name is Katie Farmond, and I am so pleased to be with you. We have a great crowd today, so welcome. This is exciting. We have a really fantastic chef today, Fabio Bongiani from Roma, as they say. You know, I'm trying to... He's, he says it so much nicer than I do. But um, how many of you have, are familiar with Chef Bongiani? One or two? Okay. So he is the he owns the very popular restaurant in Rome called That's Amore. So how much? I mean, we already love it, right? He is also the creator of the Fabiolus Cooking Day, which is an array of cooking lessons, culinary day tours, dining reservations, dining experiences all around Rome for large groups or individuals, which sounds fantastic. Um, he's a native of Rome, and he is also the spokesperson for We Love Pasta, which is pasta-making tools, um, and it's some, sold at William Sonoma and Sir Latab. So he's internationally known and a really fantastic chef, and he has a really great uh, pasta dish to share with us today. So please join me in welcoming to the stage Chef Fabio Bongiani. There he is. <laughs> Welcome, Chef. Buongiorno. Buongiorno a tutti. Il mio nome è Fabio Bongiani. I'm kidding. I want just to let you know that my Italian is much better than my English. <laughs> And so today we're going to make um, cavatelli with uh, asparagus and bacon and pecorino cheese. Okay, so we start from the stock because always when you make pasta, it's very important to have a stock. Because at the end of the pasta, when you toss your pasta with Parmesan cheese, you need even boiling water, but it's better if you have a stock, okay? A stock is heating, is a process of extracting flavor. So in a pot with cold water, you start putting your ingredients. And of course, celery, carrot, onions, okay, that we're gonna chop and prepare now. So basically we're making a quick vegetable stock, is that right? Exactly, so we're gonna peel our carrots, perfetto, with our onion, take out the skin, and we do something that you probably you don't know. The asparagus, there is the tip, there is the middle part and the end of the asparagus. Okay, so this we use for decoration. The middle part we use for a cream of asparagus. This part usually we throw away. Why we throw away? Put in the stock, it gives the flavor, okay? So we're gonna see after this. So while I'm taking out the skin of the onions, I tell you something about myself. Uh, so this is not the, my first time in Florida, it's the third time in Florida. And my first time in Florida was last year. And I was invited by friends in Miami because the first time, no, the first time you go to Italy, where you go? To Rome. First time you go to Florida, where you go? Miami. And so Miami, South Beach. Uh, I met so many Italians there. There are so many Italians in, in Miami Beach. And I realized that most of them, instead of doing nothing in Italy, they prefer doing nothing in Miami. <laughs> and, and the other part, they're working in real estate. But uh, the other, so here is the onions, and we start putting the onions in the cold water. Perfetto. And, and so the stock sort of forms the base of the sauce, is that right? The stock, actually, where we're going to cook the pasta. Are you because cooking the pasta in the stock? We're cooking oh, okay. also the pasta in the stock. Try to take all the opportunity to give flavor to your dishes. So we're making the stock, extracting the flavor from the end of the, the, the part of the asparagus. But we're cooking pasta also in that stock. Okay. So celery. Has anybody here been to Rome before? Okay, quite a few of you. And did you eat? Did anybody eat at that Zamore? Some, no. some, some. I met people at when, when it was a party of senses, and they told me I, I was in that Zamore restaurant, and I was very happy about that. Very happy. So we're now we're cleaning the asparagus. Okay, so we hold the asparagus from the tip. 
and we start cleaning easily, okay, like this. That gets okay. all the fibrous, yeah. tough stuff this, off. This is what you don't want for the cream of your asparagus, okay. Even this you can throw into the stock, okay. This gives flavor. Everything helps to give flavor, you can use it. Bene. And we're not wasting anything, which nothing, is great. When you nothing. spend money on nice ingredients, it's nice to get to use every bit of it. Perfetto. So, uh, first time in Epcot, uh, I was here last year, and I was lucky because, uh, yeah, as, you, as she told, I give cooking courses in Rome, and George, the president, took a class with me not that George, that president, the president of <laughs> Disney, okay? And so he, he was so enthusiastic in what I was doing, and he asked me if I wanted to come here to do something. And I said, of course, yes. And so he invited me last year for four days to see what I could do here. And so I spent four days here at Epcot in Orlando, going through the park, so I had a great time. And then we started sending emails to each other. I ran, and so I couldn't wait for that for one year, and I'm very happy to stay here, really. It's a great experience. I've been traveling U.S. a lot, uh, because actually my aunt is from New Jersey, because she married me, my uncle is Roman, and m my clients, most of them are from the United States, so I've been everywhere, most cooking, traveling. When I, tr when I cook around US, I like to also take the opportunity to visit something. So, and last year was my great trip. I went from California, crossing f through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, all driving in Route 66. It's a dream, it was a dream for me, driving. I got also a ticket. Uh, also, because, you know, Italians are very difficult with rules. There are more, more suggestions than rules. And so, and I was driving through, in the middle of nowhere, I think it was in New Mexico. And uh, I, I realized I, I had a, like a Christmas tree behind me, and was it the police. Uh, and so, and they pulled me over, and they asked me, I was really scared, and they asked me the driving license and the insurance, and after 10 minutes, he was calling, writing, and I, he asked me, Fam, do you read what is written here? I was so scared. My grandfather was Italian. You can go. <laughs> so, I was lucky, really lucky. It's all about who you know, or where you <laughs> come from. Me? Uh, Rome, born and raised in Rome all my life, actually. <laughs> <laughs> ben, ben. So almost done with asparagus, and and I've been also. My first time they cook in the U.S. was in um, uh, was in Boston and in uh, in Ohio. Uh, <laughs> Someone from Ohio, very nice. <gasps> and so it was funny because I was so excited because actually I starting in uh, I, I I planned my tour in Ohio first. And I start telling to all my clients from, uh, from, from the coming from US that I was going there. And the reaction was all the same. Fabio, are you sure you want to go there? There is nothing there. So, Canton. Cant <laughs> Canton. But uh, people from Midwest are very nice and friendly, I can tell. Really nice and friendly. And it was nice because uh, Canton is a small town known for all of fame. And there are the other two reasons why Canton is very famous, at least they think is famous for that. Hoover, the vacuum clean started in Canton, and an American president was born in Canton. So, who guess who was the president as a double portion of pasta? Anybody know which U.S. president was born in Canton, who Ohio? Was, who, who was the president, was born in Canton? Oh, wow, come on. Good. Good answer. Perfect answer. Double portion for Double that man. Double pasta for you. <laughs> okay. See, now don't you wish you paid more attention in history class? I do. 
McKinley. McKinley. McKinley, yes. Okay, so now the stock is ready. Is ready. Is ready to be prepared one hour and a half. We're not going to stay here one hour and a half. The stock preparer is here. Okay. So then we have uh, ice, water, and ice. Okay, when you cook the vegetables, always to stop the cooking process and to keep your vegetable green, you put in water and ice. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do now. So we're gonna put our, the middle part of the asparagus here in the boiling water, put some salt, and we wait it boils. Okay, then after we put the tips, the tips is for decoration. We're going to put the tips on decoration on our plate. Um, then we're going to put on top of our dish after grapes, tomato. Grapes, tomato, we cut in two parts. Uh, we're going we're to um, put on top, we're going to make sun dried um, tomato. Okay, so now we're going to dry out with a little bit of sugar and a little bit of salt. And do you do that just right in the oven? Exactly. Exactly in the oven. That's a great trick, too, for tomatoes that aren't quite in season, aren't quite sweet enough. When you roast them, it concentrates all the flavor exactly. and the sugars, and it makes it so much better. Although we are lucky. We are in Florida. We are entering into our second tomato season. So lucky us. I don't know. How many, how many are from Florida in the crowd? Okay, not, not many. So you can all be jealous of us that we get tomatoes in the fall. Okay, so we put our tomato into the oven. And what temperature is that? Uh, this is about how are 100, 100. So very so low. Very low. Almost acting as a dehydrator, is that right? Sort of kind of just no, getting the... No, you need to hold it. It's too hot. Less than cooking, more drying them out. Okay, perfecto. Now, um... Our, we wait for our tips and we start making the dough. Okay. There are three kinds of doughs. Water and flour, egg and flour, and potato and flour. We're making water and flour. Uh, the proportion is two to one. Two cup, one cup. So you can't miss it. So you put the flour here. You make a well in the middle. Put the water inside. Has anyone here ever made homemade pasta fresh? Who made homemade pasta at home? You it's did? A, it's a huge difference, oh, right? How many times? Once? Oh, lots. A lot. Oh, lots. Good, 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 good. Very easy. So what you start doing, you start bringing gently the flour inside. I'll mix it up. Pinch of salt. What, uh, this doesn't look like all-purpose flour. So what kind of flour is this? This semolino. Semolina. Semolino. And is that still, it's still wheat. It's just a different... Yeah, different kind of wheat. Kind of wheat. Okay. Okay. So always is, is a question of consistency, not the dough. So you're looking for the perfect consistency. Uh, it's easy to reach with this kind of dough. Egg and flour it's not so easy to reach the perfect consistency, even if I give you a proportion. Uh, 100 grams and one egg. So why is it not easy to reach the perfect consistency? Exactly, the eggs are different. So when you wanna go, when you wanna make pasta at home, jumbo eggs are the best, okay? And so gently you press and fold, press and fold, press and fold. So if you need more flour, you put more flour to reach the perfect consistency. Super, super simple. Yeah. When is it ready? When it doesn't stick anymore to your palm, okay? So while you're kneading with your palm, it doesn't stick anymore, means it's ready, okay? And does the semolina do you always use semolina? Does that give a different texture, or why do you use that? Semolina, because it's done with semolina. With this, 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 this pasta is, is. is how it is. Okay, now I'm reaching the perfect consistency. 
Okay. When you do egg dough, you put the pasta in the, into the fridge for half an hour to rest. Uh, when you do water dough, you can use it immediately. Put a pinch some more. Okay. And the shape we're making today is cavatelli. Cavatelli, yeah, cavatelli. And so what you, how you make the pasta is hold, stretch, fold, and turn. Hold, stretch, fold, and turn. If it sticks, a little bit more flour on the board. And does cavatelli, I know sometimes the words translate into English, does that have a, a uh, meaning? Cavatelli, because you know, it's like a little cave now, has a little cave inside, so it's nice because it grabs all the sauce inside. And this kind of dough needs a strong flavor, okay? Uh, egg dough, you can eat just with butter and parmesan, not this dough. This dough needs a strong flavor, definitely. Okay. So there are two ways. You can roll. You can roll like this and keep rolling, make it thinner. Another way is just doing like this. If you twist and press, comes up, magically comes up, you see? Keep twisting. So we'll roll it into a long snake. And then you cut with a knife the little, little pillows. Okay, like this. Was anybody here for the um, Mix It, Make It, Celebrate It last week when we made pasta by hand? Anybody? So this is very, this is reminding me. This is, it's really so fun when you see how simple and easy it is to make pasta at home and how uh, you're all getting to taste it now. So are you tasting the difference of the homemade, the scratch made pasta? It's really pretty remarkable. Okay. We're almost done. So this is a good activity if you have kids or grandkids, too, to get, oh, yeah. get them involved. In my cooking classes, there are a lot of kids, a lot of clients who are coming with their kids, and they have a lot of fun. Really, they have a lot of fun. And, Chef, is your restaurant in Rome, do you serve just very traditional, typical Italian fare? Uh, yes, because, you know, people are looking for something that they're expecting to find. But they, we have 30% of the recipes are more creative. Yeah, more creative. And it's very popular. I'm very happy when I go to my restaurant. And I stay there when I'm not traveling. I stay there more of the, most of the time. Okay, so one by one, we put our little pillows with your... Okay, it's very easy. And you Press see the, and little, roll. the little cave. Press and roll. How is it, everybody? Delicious. Delicious. You'd like more? It, yes. Uh, you cleaned your plate. That's good. That's a good sign. Okay. And you're also you're drinking a Chianti, which is a very classic Italian wine. It's it's a little bit light. It has some good acidity to kind of counterbalance. And I know sometimes it's hard to pair wine with asparagus, but I think that probably does yeah. a nice job. And it's very funny because when I saw this bottle, and they're a very good friend of mine, Czechy family. So, and we were both at Epcot without knowing that we were doing together something. Oh, that's and it was fun. funny. Chianti is like that classic, we all know the bottle in the straw basket. So that's usually Chianti, right? Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So it's very easy. You now we just take practice and all these tools. Uh, you find, if you go in, in shops like William and Sonoma or Sula Table, and you, f you buy the ticket, uh, the, um, the box, how to make pasta, there is a little book inside with my face that explains how to make pasta. Because actually they were looking for a chef, 
And so we met and we did something. Yeah. Exactly, because this grabs the soles also on this part and also on the other part. But there, if you don't have this, there are no excuses for not making it because you have to take the fork, press, and you have the same thing. Okay. So it's really no investment of See, no extra exactly. investment. Exactly. Right. So don't say, no. Okay, I would like to make, no, talking to, la to, to ladies, I cannot make cavatelli because I don't have the tool. Husbands, give the fork to your ladies. <laughs> okay. Or husbands, use the fork and make the pasta for your ladies. <laughs> okay. Yes, everybody needs a little help in the kitchen, yes. Bene. So now, let me see how is... Tools, pince, pince, pince. Facciamo questo. Pince, 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 pince. So if we don't... Um, to grab the... Okay, perfect. If we don't want to make vegetable stock or we're, we're running out of time, can, is that something we can use a, a stock in a box kind of thing or would you recommend just taking the time to make it yourself? Thank He's you. very busy. I would, I'm going to guess he would say probably make it yourself. It's not that much of a time commitment, right? Okay, so immediately we will watch the eyes high here. And I like the fact too, when you make a vegetable stock at home, it goes in the freezer really easily. So if you're making it once for this dish, you may as well make a big batch of it. Um, you know, my grandmother always saved her peels and things and just put that in the freezer and when she had enough she would make a batch so that's kind of what I do now too it's just it's a good way to feel like you're not wasting if you don't have a compost or, or something like that you know in this age when everybody's all about food waste it's it's kind of a good way to and saves a lot of money because that stock is not cheap right but it's it's easy to make it yourself and now we're chopping here the onions for our sauce we have the pan Our very futuristic uh, yeah. conduction, convection, induction. 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 One of those induction. words. Okay. A bit of oil. My onions. No, no garlic here. And then we put. And we cook our onions maybe a little bit more. Perfect. Now we took our asparagus. Take our asparagus. Do we have any questions for the chef while he's working? Yes. Ricotta gnocchi. Gnocchi ricotta? No, potato. 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 Potato and ricotta. And fl no, regular flour. Regular flour. So yeah. the question was if you're making gnocchi, so uh, with potato and uh, ricotta, then would you use semolina or all purpose? And he says all, all purpose. Yeah, all purpose flour. And gnocchi is a quarter of flour. Now, the classic gnocchi is potato. Usually you have to choose the right potato for making gnocchi. And is the red potato is the best potato for making gnocchi. Not a new potato. New potato is full of water. Not take out the skin when you boil the potato because all the water goes inside and you don't want that. So when it's ready, you just mix a quarter of flour of that amount of potato. Then you usually put egg yolk inside, pinch of salt, and you start kneading to make your gnocchi. But when you make gnocchi, when you make gnocchi at home, homemade, so different so different. I never buy gnocchi, but not because I make them myself, because the one you buy is like if you're eating bullets, they're so heavy. No. 
So if you think you don't, don't like gnocchi, maybe it's just because you've never had homemade gnocchi. Bene, so we finish, we finish here our cavatelli. Any other questions out there? Yes, question. Sorry? She's never seen pasta being made before. In the, in the, in the boxes? Yeah. So what's the difference between pasta in a box that you buy in the supermarket and fresh pasta? Well, no, it, it, it's different because it's a different process. Now, the, the, it's the always flour and, and water, but it has to be dried out in the, in the room, of r drying rooms, they call. No, it's totally different. It's totally different. But you, 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 you said about the, the pasta you buy in the box. I think if you're going to eat pasta most of the time, you're going to open a box. I'm sure about that. But try to make homemade. Um, a trick that I give it to you when you buy the box of pasta and you cook the pasta, if it's written 12, don't cook for 14, please. And cook for 10 minutes less. And why? Because if you finish cooking into the sauce, all the starch goes into the sauce, sauce and the starch gives a thick consistency. Uh, so you're going to reach a creamy consistency without adding cream. So don't buy cream. You're going to make your cream with it. that pasta under cooking and cooking like a risotto. Okay. We in Italy, we cook that pasta. It's difficult to do in a restaurant because you have a lot of dishes coming out. But at home, this is what we do. We undercook the pasta and we finish cooking pasta, adding a little stock and finish cooking into the sauce. The starch goes into the sauce and give that consistency, a creamy consistency. Okay, that's very important. And it really makes it one dish instead of pasta with sauce on top. So, you know, if we're used to just dumping the noodles in the bowl and putting the sauce on top. This kind of marries it all together, brings it, makes it a one cohesive dish. Okay, now we're cooking the asparagus with the onion for me to make our sauce. In another pan, we're going to start making the other part of the sauce and it is I'm there. I can do it by there myself. <laughs> yeah, perfect. I made it. Perfetto. You might do it a little higher than you need it just because it takes a little y while. Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay. So now um uh, in the recipe is bacon a uh, pig cheek. Guanciale is one of the M most mm, well-known ingredient in my region. With guanciale, we do a lot of dishes. Carbonara, matriciana, gricia, and guanciale, guancia. When you dance guancia, guancia, you dance cheek to cheek. So it's the pig cheek, okay? It's not easy to find. It's not easy to find. You can use even bacon if you want, if you don't find guanciale, so you cut in slices. So is guanciale, is it then smoked? No, cured. It's just cured. Cured. So maybe would a pancetta would work? Yeah. <laughs> works, works. Okay, so. Pork and asparagus seem to be a lovely partner, partner up really well. Has anybody ever cooked with guanciale before? Yes. I think you're Italian, I can tell. Yeah, I w went outside before and there are a lot, not of Italians, but now yeah, born like and parents, grandparents from Italy. But a lot, a lot. All my clients, most of my clients are, they're coming from the old generation from Italy. Yeah. Unfortunately, now most of them, they don't know how to speak Italian. 
You, you do? Yeah. Un poco, no poco. Uh, because now, at that time, when the, all the Italians were moving to the United States, they wanted to be American. The first thing, wanted to be American. And so they, they didn't want to give that part to their kids. And so this is the story, what they tell me. But now it's coming back a little bit. Question? They didn't want their kids to know what they were talking about. Yes, I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, you. So that's. I think that's fantastic. Anybody else from Italian heritage of Italian heritage? A lot. See, it's you know, it's pretty common. Do any of you speak Italian? A little bit. Yeah. Okay, so we finished cooking our, our, our asparagus. Then, a little bit more. Uh, I, don't, I don't hear the sound of the guanciale cooking, so let's go more. Grapes tomato. So I cut into the grapes tomato because I'm gonna cook my grapes tomato inside the guanciale. Guanciale, the, we don't put butter, we don't put oil. There is enough fat there to cook our grapes tomato. And so... So aside from, I know you said the cavatelli is just, it's just, it is semolina and that's why, but it, it gives it a chewier texture than all-purpose flour. Is that yeah, safe to say? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. And there are so many different names and shapes that you can have. And this kind of pasta is the pasta you find in the villages, Italy. Yeah, really the best. If you go out of the towns and you still have people making pasta, not in big cities, not at all. Okay, almost there. This is the quantity that I want for the presentation. Yeah, let me see here. It's almost done. Any other questions? Bene. Yes. Perfetto. The pasta in, in a restaurant? Uh, we, 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 we prepare our pasta. This is known for uh, pasta prepared in our restaurant, so we're known for that. Takes time takes time and takes space to do it, but we, we, we do it. But it makes the difference. Do you make, makes it, the total, totally do you make it every day? Yeah, make it every day. Every and is day. this pasta something that we could freeze, spread it out on a sheet tray and freeze it and then cook it again? Uh, yeah, you can put it in a tray and then freeze it. When it's frozen, you can put it in a plastic bag. But I will suggest the time you make it, eat it. Okay, so we finish here when well, everything here is under control, huh? Truly, is anybody going to go home and try this because it, he made it look so easy? I mean, really, you know, it seems like it's an, a daunting thing to make your own pasta when you can just buy a box. But when you taste the difference and see how simple it is, it's a good, it's a good way to impress friends, too, for dinner parties. Oh, yeah, for sure. Or put your friends to work and have them roll it down the fork in the kitchen or the little board, yeah? Earn that homemade pasta. Okay, so our pasta is done. Man, so we can put... We put our asparagus here. Then we make a cream with put a little little stock. Perfetto. And we put our grapes tomato. 
question, yes. Oh, so would, um, when you're making pasta, the different recipes, the flour and water versus egg, do you determine which kind you're going to make uh, by the way you're going to serve it, the sauce, or is it just a matter of preference? Uh, no, no. I was, tell, uh, I was telling before, that this kind of pasta needs a strong flavor. So I won't use this pasta for light sauces or not to, no, strong flavor. So... You, usually, instead of Parmesan, we use Pecorino cheese on this, like you add on your dish. Okay, because the Pecorino cheese has a strong flavor. So I think okay. maybe the semolina has a bit of a stronger flavor, and it definitely has a chewier bite, so probably the stronger sauce holds up better with that, versus the very delicate, like a fettuccine or something is very delicate, and as he was saying, you can just do a butter, and it would be delish. Yes. Perfect. How long do we cook the fresh, this fresh pasta? How long uh, will that be in? When it floats. When it floats. When it floats, is it ready? Okay, easy enough. Yes, question. Should the water be warm or cool or room temperature when you're room making temperature, the pasta? Room temperature. Room temperature. It's a good question. Okay. So we have the cream of asparagus done. So that's the delicious sauce that was sort of on the base of the yeah. plate. I don't see many plates with anything left on them, so I think that's a. If you can recall the green sauce that was there before you ate it all. Perfect. Was Did you get your double portion? We'll have to see if there's one back there. The history buff. Okay, when is almost the grapes tomato done? Not yet, a few minutes. We glaze with white wine a little bit no this is like this to glaze okay so we're we prepare our cheese okay we prepare our cheese pecorino cheese good very good it does have a it's similar to uh parmesan is um Parmesan is cow milk. This is sheep milk. Okay. So sharper flavor a little bit. Yeah. A little saltier maybe. Yeah. But this is you now gives strong taste to the to the flavor. I love okay. it. Any other pecorino? Okay, fans? almost done. So and when I have it in the fridge I do like a little sliver and then I take Just it and then I walk back bit. for another little sliver. Finish cooking all the wine, okay. Here is the sauce. Then we start cooking our pasta. And so that, when you said when it flows, but it's just a couple of minutes, right? It's a very couple quick, minutes, yeah. quick cook. Couple of minutes. Perfetto. My dish for the presentation. Chef, do you have a favorite pasta dish? Eating is like a desire. <laughs> no. So when you miss something, you, you can wait to have that dish. And usually in the class, there's always something that doesn't like seafood. So I don't have so many opportunities to, to cook seafood, and so I love seafood. When I have the opportunity, I go there. Bennett. If you want to make tagliatella, no, no, all purpose flour, all purpose flour, all the egg dough, all purpose flour. And then, depends how you cut, gives the name. So, tagliolini, tagliatelle, pappardelle, that's it, ravioli. But I love ravioli. Well, I love ravioli because you, know, you could be very creative 
when, when, we have, when you have the chance to come to Rome and come to visit me, I, are gonna, I hope that you're going to try those ravioli. Because you can be very creative between the filling and the sauce. No, so forget the, the classic one. No, you can make whatever you want. No, the spinach, no, ricotta and spinach. The f Here I am. Where? In Rome, yeah, near Trevi Fountain. 100 meters from Trevi Fountain. In near relation to the Vatican, where is, is that? What? In relation to, to the, the Vatican? Vatican? It's about uh, 30 minutes walking if you know where to go. I take 30 minutes. You're going to take more, much more. Anybody planning a trip to Italy or to Rome? Anybody? Okay, so anybody now, now planning after today, after this? So you should go and, and have a delicious meal. I need... Where, where was my... The presentation is very nice, too, to put a little sauce on the bottom and then have the pasta, the things in the pasta, and it kind of is less, you know, it's kind of a different way to do. At home, would you suggest still doing it this way, so to put the asparagus sauce on the bottom, or would you ever toss it all together? Oh, you never put sauce on top of the pasta. You cook the pasta with. So in this case, we're going to put the pasta inside here. Okay, it's done. And so you start tossing the pasta first to mix it up like this. I'm sorry? Um, yeah, in, in here? Yeah, that was the pasta. The pasta, yeah. So you cook the pasta here with the sauce. Now you add a little of stock. Always. Remember when I told you before? Okay. Always you need that. And when you're tossing your pasta, a little of boiling water if you don't have a stock, but if you have a stock, it's much better, okay? Because you're going to finish cooking the pasta and the sauce, and after, you're going to make the cream with the pecorino cheese. Tossing your pasta, pouring pecorino cheese on top, that's going to be the creamy sauce. So remember, I don't want to see cream in your fridges, okay? Maybe for your coffee. Maybe for okay. your coffee, but not for making pasta. This really just kind of revolutionizes the way you make pasta if you've never tried this at home to make, cook, pull the pasta out right before it's done and finish cooking it in the sauce with some of the pasta water. It doesn't taste watery. I know it seems like it might, but it really and truly makes it this silky, delicious sauce no matter what. And sometimes even if you just do butter, sometimes at home for my daughter, I just do butter and some of the cooking water and it makes it like a sauce instead of okay, butter now, noodles. Okay, now just you start tossing your pasta pouring your parmesan, your pecorino cheese, like this. We can use a spoon, right, Chef? So the important thing is out of the flame, okay, out of the heat. Why? Because if you put do this on the heat, this will make strings, okay? What is that? Yeah, so off the heat, the cheese just yeah. then kind of coats it instead of getting stringy. Gotcha. Everybody hungry all over again watching it. <laughs> the second. The second, yeah. And then you put... I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we're allowed to do that, but I'll check. And you put now on top flakes of pecorino cheese on top. We have to wait now. We have to wait a few minutes. You know why? Because I like to talk to you, but I forgot the tips. And the tips are very important for decoration. Okay. So. Tips into the boiling water here, and we put on top, okay, exactly here on the plate. So can you grab this for decoration? It's hot, so 
Any other questions? Thank you. So I put on top my dried tomato here. Would you ever open a restaurant in the United States? You know, a restaurant is a really tough job. It's really a tough job. I love this job, but it's a really tough job. Actually, I like to travel and cooking. Every I promise I come back. But Well, Chef is going to stick around afterward to answer questions, and um, he brought these uh, little postcard things um, that you all have, or your recipe if you'd like to have that signed. So, Should do um, that with extra a little beautiful bit. Beautiful finish to the dish. And a little bit of black pepper on top. Gorgeous. Okay, done. Perfect. Beautiful. A round of applause. Thank you. Thank you to our wonderful culinary team on stage and backstage, Justin and the whole team. Thank you. Our wonderful servers who make everything so smooth. And thank you all for being here. We hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and please come back and see us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.